we're completing the full moon moonology houses in this video houses 7 to 12 in a minute Hey guys, it's Mel from Mel's Divination, and we do astrology, witchy, spirituality, and all kinds of things related to that content here on the channel. And today we're going to be wrapping up a part two of a video that I already did. Now, if you want to find me on that Mel's Divination, you can always find me in the very first link in the box, in the description box below. It has all of my socials, my website, appointments, things like that. I'm not going to waste a lot of time because this video is going to be long. If you did not watch the first part, I'm going to give a super, super short introduction and we're getting right into it, okay? This is a continuation of part one. We're going over houses, the houses, not zodiac, 7 to 12 in the full moon energy. What this means is when the full moon moves throughout the year, we're coming up as I'm filming on a Pisces full moon in a few days. And that will be in everybody has their own specific house that it Pisces is in. All right. Some people it's five, some people it's 12, some people it's seven. Doesn't really matter. The point is, that is where you would look in this video for what house energy to use during the full moon. This is a resource, so you can come back and look at it at any time you want. This is based off of Yasmin Bolin's Moonology book that I used to share with everybody live. And that's pretty much it. So check out the intro to the other one if you're not quite sure, okay? So this is just part two continuing. We're going to start off with the seventh house, full moon in your seventh house. This is known as your love zone. In the next few weeks, expect relationship issues to come to the fore. Intense feelings come forward about your love life. Messages are the full moon suggests it's time for you to step aside a little. It's time to invest some emotional energy into your other half your marriage partner or a significant other or into other people in your life, like a business partner, a friend, or maybe even an adversary. Me, me, me is fine and okay at the right time, but now should be all about somebody else. At the very least, there should be a balance of you and somebody else's energy if they need your attention. The full moon can also bring closures. If you're in a friendship or a relationship that's ending now, you can proceed knowing that you're finishing things up at exactly the right time. Celestial speaking. Release any issues you have about love and relationships. This can mean your present romantic situation or one from the past. The whole point of relationships on a karmic level seems to be about us mere mortals learning lessons through other people. Someone who pushes our buttons is going to teach us a lot more about ourselves and how to handle ourselves than someone who doesn't. That's why so many wonderful relationships are quite tense at times. That's the result of two souls evolving and learning to love through the tough times. This can also be a time when we decide to sever ties on a relationship that has reached its use by date and that's okay too. Some people come to us for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, as the saying goes. A tug of war could come up between what you need and what your partner or your boss or friend or other VIP in your life needs. Find a balance between thinking of yourself and thinking of somebody else. This full moon puts the spotlight on how you feel about someone important to you. This is also a very good time to practice your negotiating and compromising skills. Whether the relationship in question is with your lover, your partner, your ex, your business partner, an adversary, see what you can do to find common ground and you will have milked the best of this full moon. Forgive. 
anyone and everyone who isn't you and then forgive yourself for any relationship mistakes you think you may have made. Believe it or not, there really is no such thing as a mistake. Everything happens for a reason and everything is perfect just as it should be. Your affirmation for this full moon is, I am loved, I am loving, and I am lovable. Then we hit the eighth house, full moon in the eighth house, which is your sex and shared finances zone. In the next coming weeks, sort out your feelings about sex and money. Intense feelings could come up about your sex, life, and your finances. This full moon is all about finding a balance between what you give in life and what you take. If you know you've been doing too much of either, this full moon is most certainly the time to redress the balance. The problem is that when we give too much, but don't know how to take, we actually mess with the natural laws that govern free flow. How can the universe send you an abundant stream of good things if you're not receiving them without a fight? This full moon also heralds a very good period to attend to practical financial matters such as paying off debts and settling personal bills. It's also a good time for investing some emotion in the bedroom. Release issues you have about anything that's holding you back or bogging you down or stopping you from living the life that you want. This is all about death and rebirth, reinvention and transformation. It can be scary, but after all, it's where death and taxes do reside. And those subjects can come up when this part of your chart is being triggered. Don't worry, this happens here only once a year, normally, and you're certainly not likely to have to deal with the heaviest aspects of it more than annually. Rather, look at the full moon here as a chance to transform as a person. It's also about cash. A tug of war could arise between your money and where your money meets someone else's. Find a balance between how much you think you're worth and how much you're actually being paid for your efforts at work. It's about self-worth versus the worth someone else puts on you. It's also about being your own boss financially versus depending on others to pay you your salary, your debts, anything. Financial windfalls and inheritances aren't out of the question when this is in your chart and it's active. This part is also about sex and issues around sex and sexuality can come up. This is good because it's the right time to deal with them and then just move on. Forgive anyone you feel has overstepped the mark, hurt you, or broken a taboo. Also forgive yourself for any problems you have had with money that you blame yourself for. The affirmation here is, I shed my past and I evolve. In the ninth house, this is your big picture zone. Release any issues that you have about the grass is greener. The full moon here means it's time for you to see the bigger picture of your life. You may be having a crisis and wondering whether this is all that there is. Take a moment to see the broader vista. Hopefully doing so will prompt you to count your blessings. This is also a time for you to think about whether you want to get away from it all or stay right where you are. Will the grass be greener if you go away? If you're staying at home, someone abroad could also have your attention. Also at this time, legal issues can resolve themselves or at least come to the forefront. A tug of war could happen between being here and wanting to be there. Being torn between home and away. Small ideas versus big ideas. Find a balance between your thoughts and your faith. This is a chance for you to let go of fear and limiting ideas and to accept the concept of a power bigger than all of us out in the great unknown. If you're going through a dark night of the soul at the time of your ninth house full moon, 
at least take solace in the fact that your timing is perfect, cosmically speaking. This is a chance for you to grow spiritually and expand your understanding of the world around you. Open yourself up to new ideas. Forgive people who are narrow-minded or yourself if you have been narrow-minded. And your affirmation for this full moon is, I know I am blessed. The 10th house, no. The 10th house is also known as your career zone. In the next two weeks, sort out issues related to your work. Intense feelings can come up around your career or your professional trajectory. If you've been hiding yourself away and generally keeping a low profile, watch out. The skies are suggesting rather loudly that it's time for you to step out of the shadows and back into the limelight. As tempting as it may be to slouch around at home, the full moon in your 10th house is telling you it's time to invest some emotional energy in your professional life. Even if your work has been the source of annoyance lately, don't give up. For some, a work situation or project comes to an end now. Don't panic. Remember the universe abhors a vacuum and something new will come in to take its place soon enough. How committed are you to your goals? This can be your time to shine at work. When the full moon takes place in your 10th house, it's also as though you're being pushed into the spotlight professionally. Ready or not. For some of us, it will be because a big work project is coming to fruition. Hopefully, you will receive accolades for all your hard work. On the other hand, if a project or a job is coming to an end now, there is a need for at least consolation in the fact that it's happening in divine timing. This is a good time to ask yourself how you feel about your career. Where do you want to go next with it? Release any issues you have about your workload and how it impacts your home life. A tug of war could come up between your duties at home and all that you need to get done ahead in your career. Find a balance between who you are inside versus who you are out in the world as someone who does or doesn't seek to achieve. As with the full moon in the fourth house, this lunation asks you to find a work and life balance. There could be tensions or demands at home that are affecting your ability to function at peak levels at work. Or work drama could be keeping you from living a rich personal life. Whatever the case, this is the second chance you have in a 12 month cycle to find a balance. For some, recognition comes now. For others, it becomes clear that more emotional investment is needed professionally. Forgive anyone, including yourself, that you feel may have had any kind of negative behavior at work. The affirmation for this one is, I have a perfect work in a perfect way. I give a perfect service for perfect pay. I'm not a huge fan of those, but it's what you put. Make it your own. Eleventh house is your friend's zone. In the next two weeks, deal with any upsets with a friend or with friends. Intense feelings come up about friendships and unfulfilled dreams. It's tempting to focus on yourself and your own pleasures. Perhaps you're a creative type who loves to express yourself. And why not? After all, life is for living and having fun. However, this month's full moon is reminding you that you need to find a balance between indulging in a bit of what you fancy and remembering that the people in your life also need some attention from you. <laughs> Whatever you do now for someone else, you'll get extra karmic brownie points. This also makes the coming month good for networking. What are you dreaming of? And do you know anyone who can help you get it? The full moon here casts warm and gentle light on your wishes. Are they working for you? Are you getting what you're dreaming of? And if not, why do you think that is? It's a strange but true fact that sometimes we just know we're not going to get what we're paying lip service for. Sometimes we know on an intuitive level that something is never going to happen. Or perhaps we no longer want what we once desired. 
this is the ideal time to release anything like that into the ethers. This part of your chart is also crucially about friends and networks. How are you with your friends now? Are you happy with them? Would you like to make new friends? Issues related to friends can come up at this time. Breathe deep before you deal with them. A friendship that ends at this time is definitely ending at the right cosmic time. Release issues you have with what you've been wishing for. Are there dreams that don't seem to manifest or friendships that are troubling you? A tug of war could come between who you are versus who your friends are. Find balance in what you need for yourself versus what you need to do for and give to your friends. This is about the clubs, groups, and social networks you belong to. When the full moon comes here, chances are you will have at least one friendship that needs your attention. Are you pulling your weight within your friend group? Or does someone have cause for complaint? Or is it you who feels someone else could be a better friend? The full moon reminds you that you have to balance your own needs with those of your social circles, networks, and groups. Forgive any friend who hurt you at any point in your life and yourself for whatever you feel you did or didn't do in relation to that friendship. And your affirmation for this full moon is, I am a great friend and I attract great friends. Or my dreams and wishes are now manifesting. The final house is the 12th house. This is your secrets zone. In the next weeks, take time out. Intense feelings can come up about your secret self. Life has probably felt very busy recently and no one can blame you for wanting to take some time out. The full moon in your 12th house is going to allow you to do just that. For many people, this full moon comes at a time when they're feeling a little bit down in the dumps, but the fact is they are likely just exhausted after the efforts of keeping up with the demands of daily life. Take some time out, meditate, practice yoga. You need to strike a balance between working and time out. The worst thing about the 12th house is that it forces you to look at where you may have been sabotaging yourself with your own behavior. The best thing about it is that it forces you to look at yourself about where you've been sabotaging yourself and your own behavior. Get it? <laughs> it's unfortunately known as the house of self undoing. We all have the 12th house and we all have parts of ourselves that are indeed our own worst enemy. The good news is, is that when the full moon takes place in this part of your chart, it's a wonderful chance to identify that behavior, to see it for what it is, and to let it go. Release issues with things you don't like to talk about. A tug of war may arise between the things that you have to keep doing to keep life going versus a need for your own inner peace. Find a balance between your daily life as a functioning human being and that secret side of you that's mysterious, delicate, and perhaps even a little bit dark. For some, it's what we think we should hide, and for others, it's what others, probably parents, have told us we should hide. This can bring up some pretty intense feelings, whether we like it or not. We may even find ourselves apologizing because this is the house of self undoing, like I said, and not expressing how we feel is a wonderful way to self sabotage. The month when you have your personal annual full moon in the 12th house is the ideal time to go on a retreat if that appeals to you. It's a time to do inner work and even to explore your spirituality. Sometimes this full moon will bring or reveal a big secret. Go easy on yourself at this time of the year. It is one of the most emotionally intense full moons. The next one will be the start of your new cycle and easier. Forgive yourself for anything you feel ashamed of 
Understand that there's nothing to be ashamed of. We are all growing and forgive anybody else who has hurt you. Your affirmation is, it is okay to have quality me time. That wraps up our 12 houses, 7 to 12, part 2, Moonology for the full moon. Everything will be time stamped so you can jump around, come back and revisit when you need to. Again, this is from Yasmin Bolin, her book, Moonology. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.